Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked for this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So these are actually some of my older Visconti pens that I decided uh, to an ode to uh, a friend uh, called Tony in Kansas City who has been meticulously going back and re-inking all of his old pens and making sure that he uses them. Uh, I decided that I would try and do the same on at least one, if not several, of my currently inked videos because I am realizing that a lot of these are not getting a lot of writing experience lately because I'm constantly gravitating towards the newer pens in my collection. So I think let's go through these pens uh, here. It's a Visconti Divina. Um, Technically, it's called the Proportioni, and this is the Desert Springs. We have a Visconti Divina in brown. We have a Visconti Divina Elegance in green. We have a Visconti Divina, and this is not the regular blue version. This is called the Blue Typhoon. We have a Visconti Opera Master Crimson Tide, a Visconti Opera Master and this was a, uh, strange enough, a Goulet exclusive. Actually, both of these were Goulet exclusives. Uh, this is the Lunar version. We have a Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust. We have a Visconti Opera Master River Thames, which was a Chatterley Luxuries exclusive. We have uh, two Visconti Opera Masters here. And uh, these are from uh, Truffet. And uh, this is called the Stardust, and this is called the Corvina. So I think let's take a look at these pens a little bit more detail here. So this is the beautiful Visconti Divina, and this is the Proportioni, and this is the Desert Spring. Now, uh, I do have my initials there on uh, the uh cap finial um, you can these are my pen finial uh, so you can swap them out for gemstones or initials uh, I started um, to, to put to replace the Visconti uh, um, uh, cap finial with my initials and very quickly I realized that the the set of these initials that are sold to retailers there's only about five of each letters so after buying around five or so, Colt Pens, who I was buying these from at the time, sold out. So uh, I then, later on when I restart, got a few more, and then I decided, you know what, I've got a lot of Viscontis. This is going to become quite expensive, because they were like £5 a letter, I think. So £10, I think, for, for basically for the set. So not, not expensive, but equally, though... I've got 70 plus fountain pens uh, from Visconti, so it's gonna get expensive. So, seven, I think I'm at 79 now, so that would have been 790 pounds worth if I wanted to have initials on all of my Viscontis. So, that's the price of another Visconti. Um, this is a beautiful celluloid dough, it's it reminds me of uh holidays where I would go to Cornwall as a kid and. Uh, typically, most sands in the UK are, and, and earth, well, so sands are, are more of a yellow colour, earth is more of a brown colour, but in Cornwall, their, their um, earth is more of a reddish colour, and uh, and when you mix it with sand, you get this kind of lovely red hue, so uh, I really, early on, actually saw this and really loved this material, it is celluloid. Um, I did actually want the limited edition one, but it was twice the price. So uh, this was early on in my collecting career. Um, I, I guess really I nowadays, if I were to buy this one, I probably would actually get the the actual collector's edition one, which, which has an ink window. Um, but I'm not going to rebuy the same pen just to have an ink window on it um it does have uh the, the divinas do have these captured converters so the filling mechanism is a converter inside you cannot remove it you cannot unscrew the body uh it is all glued together so 
uh, you cannot remove or replace this converter. So that can be a downside for some people that that uh, have had converters fail uh, quite a lot, then you might uh, be concerned about that. Uh, I've not had uh, any of these Davina um, captured converters fail, so uh, it doesn't bother me. It's only going to hold, even though it's quite a long pen here, it's only going to hold around 0.7 milliliters of ink because it is essentially a converter inside. Um, but this material is really stunning. And um, these, uh, because these Savinas were the older models, uh, so some of them were even older actually. They would come with the older style 18 cap gold Visconti nib. These came with a 23 cap palladium nib. This was a medium. And I can't remember exactly. Uh, what number of pen this was from Visconti in my collection, like in terms of how many I'd bought prior to this, but I want to think it was probably no more than maybe five pens. So uh, I, I just like this. It was a good price at the time, and I decided I would buy it. So I decided I would try and uh, ink that one up uh, this week and really try and give some love to some of these pens and, and write some letters with these. Uh, another Visconti Davina that I, I purchased, I actually got uh, um, on an eBay auction uh, back then. Uh, this, I think, was 2017, maybe. Um, and this this was, uh, there was a online store called Marte Modena um, in Italy. And they were selling lots of pens at cheap prices. I saw this one. And I just, I just bought it. Um, I, I think, I think it was it was an auction, and I bid on it. Um, but nobody else had bid on this one. It was about half the price of a regular Davina. So um, it's not celluloid. It is resin, but it does have this beautiful, beautiful resin. Um, now, on these Davinas, you do have these uh, rods here that spiral round the pen, whereas the Desert Spring you did not. Now, these rods are actually uh, silver rods, uh, so um, they will tarnish over time, and you may see that there is a little bit of sort of tarnishing going on on some of those rods there, but you can polish them up if you want. Again, a captured converter here, uh, 23 cat, uh, palladium nib, and again, a medium nib here, um, but th these are decent length pens. Yes, it does have a captured converter, if you like posting your caps, they post. The rods also line up as well. Um, the only issue with Davinas, and I've really not seen it on any of mine, but I have seen others complain about it, is that sometimes these rods, because they are glued in place, that they will actually start lifting up over time because essentially glue does fail. Um, that said, most modern day pens are glued together. The parts are glued together. So if you have a ring like this, if you have a cap band, a lot of the time they're glued in place. So will modern pens survive 100 years? Yes, they probably will. Are they going to survive intact? Possibly not. Because most modern day pens will have some glue at some point on the pens but like i said i've had these for probably what seven was it 2017 i think i bought these so six six going on seven years and i've not had any issue with these whatsoever so i think to be honest it's going to be fine uh this one here is the uh, visconti divina elegance in green they called it the elegance uh, it was uh, sort of more of a bronze, uh, I think it was bronze um, trim here that, that you have, or rose gold maybe, uh, I'm pretty sure it was bronze. Um, very, very nice. Uh, has some really great uh, chatoyance there on that green. Absolutely stunning. Uh, this was actually the, the first time that I actually uh met uh online with with chris at truffet uh he saw that i had a load of viscontis he saw that i had this visconti divina and i think i'd already had this one as well and and he was trying to sell me this elegance in green and as you can see he did sell it to me in the end so 
that was um, a good buy. And um, I uh, got this with, again, another medium nib. These are 23 cap palladium nibs. But again, like you can uh, post those caps and that uh, those rods twisting around the body and the cap will line up. So uh, if you have a little bit of OCD or you're a sucker for things lining up correctly, then they will line up. Uh, I absolutely do love this color. Not so much the brown, maybe. Um, the green just really, really speaks to me. And then uh, this one is a Visconti Divina, and this is, so these are all oversized. I do have um, several that, that are the midi size, what they used to call midi. Um, but this is not the regular blue uh, edition. This is a numbered edition, and this was called the Blue Typhoon, or BLU Typhoon. Um, again, beautiful um, material, quite chatoyant there. But can you see that there's a lot of black veins going through that material? And that's really what makes this the Typhoon more than the regular blue, as I understand it. Again, it's captured converter. Uh, and again, a 23 cap palladium nib there. Uh, medium nibs. I, I always used to be a medium nib person. Um, I got this actually uh, on eBay. Uh, you can, again, you can see these silver rods do line up. Uh, I actually bought this from um, a, uh, an eBay seller called Rosmenko in Australia. He is still on eBay. Uh, I think he's in his mid to late 70s now. Uh, he is a pen collector. He uh, was or is the Visconti distributor for Australia. Uh, and he sells these pens uh don't know that I've seen a Blue Typhoon recently, but he does have a lot of Visconti. So I did go through a phase where I was not only buying pens from Chris and Truffet in, in, in the US, uh, shipping to the UK, but also from uh, Rosy or Rosmenko. Um, and, and he's based in Australia. I think it's Melbourne, Australia. Uh, and then there was this pen, and this was a pen that I lusted after for a long time. Uh, I remember seeing Brian Goulet showing this pen, uh, and I was just in awe. This this is a demonstrator pen, but you have these beautiful celluloid uh, shavings of ribbons going around uh, this pen. And it actually reminds me of my childlike days when, uh, as a child, I, I used to play marbles, you know, the, the glass balls, and you'd roll them on the on the ground and that. And you try and win games uh, and, and win marbles off of people. And a lot of them had this kind of like ribbon-like effect. And it just took me back to those days uh, that I actually liked. Um, and uh, I saw this and I really wanted it. But it was long, long sold out, unfortunately. But uh, I was able to, to pick this one up in the end. Somebody was selling one uh, on eBay. So uh, I was very, very lucky to pick this one up. Um, it did come with a 1.3 millimeter, 23 cap palladium stub nib. So that's a big nib. Um, but you know what? I, I was immediately going to change it out for a medium or a fine nib when I got it. But I actually liked writing with it. And uh, you can post these caps, but it does make it a bit back weighted. So I, I actually left that nib in there. And uh, the, the old Opera Masters were screw threads, not hook safe lock as they are nowadays. But uh, I, I left that in there, and, and I liked it so much that I started to go on a bit of a kick with stub nibs. And I had tried uh, the Twisby 1.5 millimeter stub nibs, steel nibs, without tipping, didn't really care for them that much. I like these 1.3 millimeter uh, 23 cap palladium stub nibs because they had some bounce to it. But they also had tipping on the nib, which is what I prefer. So when I had the opportunity of getting this uh, Visconti Opera Master Luna from Goulet, I, I actually went for a stub nib. And uh, this is a beautiful material. It's got a, a lot of uh, silver dust there in, in that body. Uh, beautiful, beautiful material. Uh, so I, I was lucky to pick this one up 
188 worldwide of these uh, and uh, a beautiful pen uh, and I did get a 1.3 millimeter stub nib on this one. Again, screw thread, uh, you've got the ink window there and typically the ink windows are what uh, the Opera Masters had but you can see, uh, again this does post but it does feel back weighted. These pens are already quite heavy but you can see in the size of my hand it is actually a decent, decent size. So I, I these are not pens, uh, and I think this is probably why I don't like posting my caps because I typically have longer and in some cases heavier pens, so I don't need to post caps that often. Um, now, <laughs> this one was was a little bit of sweet. I, I'd been after the Visconti Opera Master Tobacco. Uh, a friend, Tony in Kansas City, uh, had bought one, and I absolutely loved it. I saw Stephen Brown had one, uh, which he's long sold. And I, I actually liked it so much that I wanted it. But it was a clear demonstrator with a bit of smokiness in it. Uh, and I saw one, I think it was, um, oh, actually, no. I wasn't. I was thinking it was Drum Gauls. It wasn't Drum Gauls. It was uh, Bertram's Inkwell. He had a second-hand one, but it had a lot of ink staining on the ink window, uh, in hindsight, I probably could have bought it, sent it to Visconti, and they would have would have repaired the ink window most likely. Uh, but I didn't. I I um, left it about a week, and then it sold. Uh, so I kicked myself even more at that point. But then this one came up, and I was in love with it. It's a beautiful smoky uh, golden dust, which I never knew even existed uh, as a as a pen uh, material uh, that Visconti had turned. So I jumped on this and bought it. I actually uh, had, uh, uh, I think it was this one, or was it the Crimson Tide? It might have been both. I had uh, help from Chris at Truve brokering the deal. Uh, and then he shipped, he, he basically, I paid Chris, he paid the seller. Uh, the seller shipped to Chris and then uh, he shipped the pens to me uh, with a few other pens that I'd bought from him. Uh, beautiful material, really like it a lot. And this is why it's a bittersweet because I wanted the tobacco. I left it a week, didn't get it. It sold out. I bought this one, and within a week, another tobacco came around. Um, but I decided at that point I wasn't going to buy it. I wish I had, but I, I didn't. Uh, again, um, screw threads, uh, an ink window. Uh, this came with a 23 cat palladium fine nib. I did swap it out for a medium nib actually at one point. Uh, and then put the fine nib back on because I actually really liked. I, I started going away from from the the stub nibs, going to medium nibs, and then going a little bit towards the finer nibs again. And so I did that, and and I left that fine nib on there. Um, then when Chatterley had uh, this uh, offer, it was the River Thames. Uh, this material is it's resin, but it's made out of the same material that the Visconti Homo Sapiens London fog cap was made out of beautiful material uh there were uh, four one two three four versions of this there was the yellow gold the rose gold the rhodium and the ruthenium now the yellow gold i believe was the sunrise which is what this is there was the uh midday which was the rhodium silver uh, plated finish then there was the sun set which was rose gold and then ruthenium was night um i nearly bought uh, a couple different trim colors because i really did like this pen beautiful pen really like it and uh again screw threads uh, ink window but i decided i would get it with a 1.3 millimeter stub nib again these all post quite nicely a little bit back weighted though but um they are nice um but I typically have not bought... Somebody actually uh, had asked me a while ago, actually, uh, I don't see you using stub nibs much. And, yeah, I, I haven't actually bought any stub nibs probably for about, I want to say, four years now. Because most of my pens that I write with, I, I typically write letters with. And I've got to the point where, with the stub nibs, I was writing on a... I think it was a 12 millimeter line ruling uh, and that was fine but I could only get so many lines on the page nowadays I write in a seven millimeter line ruling uh, or eight 
I think probably eight, seven to eight millimeter. And um, yeah, seven, it is seven millimeter. Um, but uh, I can write quite nicely in that, that seven millimeter line ruling gap with medium nibs and fine nibs and broad nibs, but I can't with stub nibs. So typically I, I have to swap out uh, how I need to write larger with the stub nibs. So I typically don't write uh, a lot of letters with these, but I do need to get into writing uh, more letters with them. It really shows off the ink. Uh, and then I had the opportunity to, to not only review, but also buy uh, these two from Chris at Truffet. And he did this uh, special with Visconti and Coles of London. And this is the Visconti Opera Master, and it's the Stardust. And uh, out of the two, I would say I really prefer this one. Um, I think I, I kind of would have liked it a little bit lighter, but uh, it's a beautiful sort of galaxy Stardust, almost like popcorn effect, uh, it, it, with ruthenium trim on it. Uh, has the screw threads and the ink window. Uh, but I did get that in a... 1.3 millimeter stub nib and i want to say that this was these two i think were the last 1.3 millimeter stub nibs that i actually did buy because i was going off of the the stub nibs at that point uh going i, I was going more for broad nibs uh, i found broad was a a, a nice medium uh, intermediate between a, a medium and and a, a stub nib so, and I could still write with broad nibs on a seven millimeter line ruling. So uh, I started going for broad nibs. Uh, and then this one is the Visconti Opera Master Corvina. Uh, these were actually uh, made in uh, or released in 2018. Um, so, so these are, um, uh, I can't remember actually what the, uh, uh, there it is there actually, the limited edition number there. So there's 28 of each of these. Uh, so this is a Corvina. Again, a, a very nice sort of popcorn-y effect going on there. Uh, beautiful pen and, uh, again, screw threads, uh, ink window and a 23-cap palladium stub nib there. Uh, and it does also post as well. Um, so if you like to post pens in these Viscontis, whether or not it's the Davinas or it's the uh, Opera Masters, I think also most of the Homo Sapiens posts as well. So uh, if you do like to post your pens and you want a Visconti, then certainly check out those pens. The Opera Masters are a lot heavier because of the, the metal uh, power vac knobs. So these are captured converters and these are power vac models uh, with the double reservoir and uh, the ink window as well. Um, so they are power vac models. But I do like them. They hold a huge amount of ink. I think it's two and a half milliliters of ink it holds, roughly. So you never, I'd say never, but it's going to be hard to run out of ink. You've got to do a lot of writing with a single pen to, to run out of ink. So that's my 10 pens currently ink this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here is the Visconti Divina Desert Spring. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch here. And I've always, I, th I think, that, I think that there's one or two times where I have not inked it up with this ink, but I always love the beauty of this ink. So this is the uh, Visconti Divina, and it's the Desert Spring. And uh, it is a medium, and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is a Pilot Oroshizuku. And it is Satsuji, which is a beautiful uh, pink ink. Uh, it is one that I do like a lot. I've not actually used that ink a lot lately, but... It does have sheen, and I just want to show you the bottle here. Look at this. It has a beautiful gold sheen to it. So that's why I do think that this ink is very beautiful. The next pen inked up here is the Visconti Divina Elegance in Brown. 
So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, I do find that this one is a slightly more stiffer nib uh, than uh, the previous uh, Davina. Um, so this is the uh, Visconti Davina. These are all oversized uh, in brown. And it is a medium and it is a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Waterman. absolute brown which i think was at one point called havana brown uh, but that is quite a nice uh, darker brown ink the next pen is the visconti divina elegance in green so we'll do an ink swatch and this I also find a little bit harder in the Palladium nib. Um, it's not as bouncy as uh, the uh, Desert Spring. But I do still like it. So it's a Visconti Davina Elegance in green. And it's again another medium uh, 23 cap palladium nib and then the ink in here is a diamine meadow and i want to think i may have also inked this up before with diamine apple glory uh i think maybe also akaman uh hyacinth's sap grown as well uh, I think that might have been another ink that I have at some point put in there. But I think Diamond Metal is, is the main ink that I have used most of the time. The next pen here is the Visconti Divina Blue Typhoon. So we'll do another ink swatch here. And uh, again, like this is not a bouncy palladium nib. Uh, it does have a little bit of bounce, but it's not what I would call bouncy. Um, so they do vary a little bit. So this is the uh, Visconti uh, Davina um, in the blue Typhoon. And it's a medium and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is Visconti Blue, uh, which is a, a nice ink. And I did get quite a few bottles of that ink uh, with various pens that I bought from Visconti, where they would give away a bottle of ink uh, in those uh, um, large boxes of pens. The next pen here is the Visconti Opera Master Crimson Tide. So again, we'll do an ink swatch. Now, you can just see how wet this is. These are very wide writing nibs. So this is the Visconti Opera Master. And um, this is the Crimson Tide. And, yeah. I think that's running... I'm just going to flush that ink a little bit more. Um, they do, uh, I do find the 1.3 millimeters are over polished, so they do skip quite a bit. Uh, this is a 1.3 millimeter uh, 23 cap palladium nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is a diamine wild. There you go, see. You do find that that, that does happen uh, with these nibs. So uh, I think that was one of the reasons why I uh, decided uh, to to really go towards more broad nibs was, was because uh, some of those nibs can start skipping. Uh, all you need is a slight amount of hand oil on the page and it will start to skip a little bit. But as you can see, the, this is a five millimeter line ruling. And I, I could almost get away with 
five millimeter, but I, I kind of feel that I do need to write larger. Um, but I'm going to give it a try um, this week and try writing in seven millimeter and see if I can actually get back to writing with a lot of these nibs. The next pen is the Visconti Opera Master, and this is the Luna. And this was a Goulet exclusive. Uh, so we'll do an ink swatch here. And again, this is a 1.3 millimeter stub nib. So they are like paintbrushes. So if you really want to show off the ink, then you definitely want one of these. So it's a Visconti Opera Master. But you can see here, like the the R there started to close up. So that's why I, I kind of feel that I need to uh, really write with like 12 millimeter line ruling. Um, it's a 1.3 millimeter 23 cap palladium stub nib. And the ink in here again is Visconti blue. Uh, but you can see the difference between this one in a medium nib and this one in a stub nib. You can just see how much wetter that is. And you're probably going to see some feathering on this paper. This is Oxford Optic paper. Uh, but um, it, it's not as good as Tomoe River. But it's certainly a lot better than, than a lot of the other paper out there for fountain pens. But you will still sometimes actually see uh, the, the uh, ink will feather on the page. The next pen here is the Visconti Opera Master. And this is the Golden Dust. And I was trying to think what ink I use. Typically, I sometimes will use um, uh, Waterman, Absolute Brown. Uh, I think Diamine Ochre uh, also. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, you can see this is a fine nib. So uh, still fairly wet, but it's definitely a lot finer than that stub nib. So this is a Visconti Opera master and it's the golden dust now just going back to uh this pen here if i like i i can write in capitals here and it's perfectly fine if i were to write in lowercase i would not be able to do it because all of the letters would just close up so this is a visconti opera master golden dust uh it's got a fine and it's a 23 cat palladium nib and then the ink in here is a diamine Ochre. I think in the past I may have also put uh, Mont Blanc Toffee Brown in there as well. Um, I, I typically do put a brown ink in there. Uh, I do like that a lot. The next pen here is the Visconti Opera Master River Thames. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And... I think in the past I've actually put a blue ink in here as well. Um, obviously because of the River Thames. But I typically, look because there's a lot of grey in this pen, I typically do like to put uh, a grey ink in here. So this is the uh, Visconti Opera Master River Thames. And it, again, it's a, a 1.3 millimeter, 23 cap palladium stub nib. And then the ink in here is diamine Earl Grey. But uh, if, if I try to write this, I'll show you here. If I try to, to do that, like I, I can just about get away with it on a five millimeter line ruling but i do find that like the e here in gray has, has just closed up and you kind of it starts to look a little bit more like a smudge so from that perspective i i typically do need to write in a larger uh, line ruling at that point the next pen here is the visconti opera master and this is a stardust So we'll do another ink swatch here. Again, another paintbrush. Uh, th these are great if you want to do a lot of artwork with them and it's not fine lines. So this is the Visconti Opera Master 
Stardust. And it's a 1.3 millimeter, 23 cat palladium nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is a uh, Visconti uh, Bordeaux. But which is a, a, a very nice uh, red, dark red ink, a uh, Bordeaux color ink. Uh, it's, it's a color that I have liked a lot in the past. And then the last pen here is the Visconti Opera Master Corvina. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch here. And again, this is a paintbrush. And I'm just off camera here. But this is the uh, Visconti Opera Master Corvina. Uh, and it's a 1.3 millimeter, 23 cat palladium stub nib um now the i'm trying to think if i've used another ink in the past in this uh i think i have i can't remember what it was but this one is a diamine poppy red and i, I think i have used a lighter mid to light red uh on uh it inked up in that pen in the past So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. We have a Visconti Davina Desert Spring in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Pilot Washer Zuku Satsuji. We have a Visconti Davina Brown in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Waterman Absolute Brown. We have a Visconti Davina Elegance in green in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Diamine Meadow. We have a Visconti Davina Blue Typhoon in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Visconti blue. We have a Visconti Opera Master Crimson Tide in a 1.3 millimeter 23 cap palladium stub nib inked up with Diamine Wild Strawberry. We have a Visconti Opera Master Luna in a 1.3 millimeter 23 cap palladium stub nib inked up with Visconti blue. We have a Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust in a fine 23 cap palladium nib inked up with diamine ochre we have a visconti opera master river thames in a 1.3 millimeter 23 cap palladium stub nib inked up with diamine earl gray we have a visconti opera master stardust in a 1.3 millimeter 23 cap palladium stub nib inked up with visconti bordeaux and then we have a visconti opera master corvina in a 1.3 millimeter 23 cap palladium stub nib inked up with diamine poppy red so there you have it that's my current ink pens for this week thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe and i'll see you on the next pen video bye bye